American English American English Teach and learn American English Welcome to Teaching Tips from American English. In part one of this three-part teaching tip topic, Andrew Screen will explore what flipped learning is, and some benefits for flipping your English language classroom. Welcome, Andrew. Hi. Welcome, everyone, to the flipped classroom. What it is and why do it. Let's get started. Let's look at today's goals. First, I'll show you what flipped learning is, and after, I'll point out some reasons why you might want to consider flipping learning. Flipped learning reverses what happens in class and out of class. In a non-flipped class, the teacher might explain or lecture in class and give students homework to practice the new skills outside of class. In flipped learning, students study new concepts and language constructs outside the classroom and practice their new skills inside the classroom. So one way of looking at flipped learning is moving what traditionally happens in the group learning space to the individual learning space and then taking what traditionally happens in the individual learning space and moving it into the group learning space or classroom. This is a good visual of what flipped learning looks like. The teacher's role is more of a guide as students practice. The role of the teacher is not to be the almighty giver of information. Students can, in fact, learn the concepts outside of class and use class time to apply the concepts. The flippedlearning.org has provided four pillars for flip. The F stands for flexible. Effective flipping should have a flexible environment. This means that the instructor should consider his or her students different learning styles and learning timeline, meaning that students learn at different paces. And also, learning spaces can and should be flexible. A flexible environment should facilitate learning. How does the furniture in your classroom dictate what you do in your classroom? The L stands for learning culture. In other words, the instruction is learner-centered rather than teacher-centered. The I stands for intentional content, which to me means that the class content is designed with the flip in mind. For example, if you're planning to teach a grammar structure, the content is accessed by students outside of class. The P stands for professional educator, meaning that the role of the teacher in a flip is to observe students. Flipping should allow more time in class to observe students using the language. Provide feedback. Students want this, and that is one of our roles as teachers, to provide guidance and feedback. Reflect what is working in class in the flip and what is not. Then make changes as necessary based on your observations. And finally, tolerate organized chaos. In other words, when flipping, activities are more student-centered. This can mean a loud classroom with multiple students carrying out tasks in pairs or small groups. It can be loud. Allow the learning to be a bit messy. I think that these four pillars can help a teacher who's considering flipping Visual, better visualize what the flip might look like. In the flipped classroom, instruction moves from inside the classroom to homework. In many cases, this instruction takes place in the form of video, but this is not the only way that flipping can be done. Simply put, students learn the, le the lecture information at home so that they have time to practice in class. Well, what does the inside of the flipped classroom look like? The classroom turns into a dynamic, interactive place where students do not simply receive information. Instead, students engage in tasks to apply concepts. How great is that? Students actually have time to practice. That's one of the main reasons why I flip my classroom. If you have ever said, we don't have time to cover all this material, then flipping is an approach you might want to consider. When I flip my lessons, my students have more time to engage with the content. Requiring students to learn at least basic concepts can promote autonomous learning. Students have to come to class with some knowledge. That's why you flip learning, because flipping can help with the pacing or speed of the class, and it can help to individualize learning. Without flipping, day one of new content can be painful, as teachers tend to teach to the average student's ability. As a result, the strong students are bored, and the students who are weaker are lost and or confused, and that's not fun for anybody. When learning is flipped, students are able to start the learning race in a similar place because they've all had a chance to prepare. In my experience, this means students ask better questions on the first day of a new unit. Why? Because they can actually use the language necessary to ask a question, having thought about the concepts 
instead of being lectured to and having to process new information at a one-size-fits-all pace. So to sum up, today I showed you what flipped learning is and some of the benefits of flipping so that you can decide whether it's a good option for you and your teaching context. Thanks for joining us for part one of the flipped classroom and click here for part two on how to flip. To check out other great teaching tip videos, be sure to subscribe to our American English YouTube channel. You can find resources for teachers on the American English website by clicking on the link listed here. And if you haven't already, be sure to like us on the American English for Educators Facebook page.